All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So as of late, as we launch these new podcasts, FYI here in 2019, I've been surprising my guest co-host by just offering live streaming and uh, just because I get bored and it's technology and why not have fun with it? Uh, so let me give you a quick skinny on our newest guest co-host that we're recording with. And again, these live streams are fun because you're getting a taste in the Facebook world first before we actually air this in the podcasting world and the YouTube world in a few weeks. Uh, but let me, let me jump right in. We're going to get a little fearless today. We might be talking a little bit about wealth. We might be talking a little bit about lifestyle freedom because let's, let's be real. Sometimes it makes lifestyle fun a little bit easier when you got the right money. I'll shorten it up like that. <laughs> but this gentleman sits at the intersection of money and human behavior. We geek out about psychology on this show a lot. For over 20 years, he's helped people hear what their money is trying to tell them. His struggle with dyslexia, watching his parents' life savings get embezzled, and his background in neurolinguistic programming, NLP, we've dabbled on that a few times in this show as well, taught him to question the obvious. And uh, right before I started recording this show, I dropped a quick little line about, you get what you pay for. So I'm intrigued how he's going to respond at the very beginning of this show. We're talking about fearless wealth, and we're talking with R.C. Peck. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, man. It's great to be here with you. Great to be here. And uh, so I dropped that line after we talked about skydiving. We'll get that in a second. Uh, but why did, you, why did you want to make sure we did not skip over that one first part to start the show off? <laughs> the investing world is so, so different than the earnings world. So just most mm -hmm. people don't know there's this huge difference between you got to make it and then you got to keep and grow it. And these worlds have nothing to do with each other, even though there's this common unit called money or, or wealth. So people believe, which makes sense, because from the earnings world, if you buy a Mercedes, you're going to have a different experience than if you buy a Kia. Yes. Most I've, people driven, would, I've driven both. So. You've driven both, all right. And, and they all, and, but they give you a different experience also, right? I mean, I'm not talking crash ratings and things like that. So people take these, these earnings beliefs and they, they go over to the growth world and they go, well, if I pay more, then I'm going to get more, right? If I go to the, the big box advisor who's charging me more or charging me, mm. then I'm going to get more. I mean, the fee thing is so, it's so messed up because all big box advisors, they do the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing. They have oh, it's definitely cookie cutter. It's, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, now, is that because it's like proven in the financial world that that's why they all do it that way or proven system replication or... The two best business models on the planet, number one is a religion, hmm. number two is a big box advisor. Yes. In that order. Yes. So take the big box advisor. They're going to scare you. I mean, they're going to scare you. They're going to use jargon and language. They're going to be dressing nicer than you. They're on the 10th story, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're renting on the second or third story. You're going to go into their office and you're be like, man. They're going to talk a lot of jargon to you. They're going to scare and freak out your brain. And then, and then they're going to go, but guess what? We'll, we'll take care of that. That feared mm -hmm. how we're scaring you. We're going to swoop in as your hero and we're going to take care of you. So they're, they're this, playing to the psychology on that, right? It is one. It, they don't even know it because they're, you've got to be out of the system to break the system. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, what I hear a lot from people is they come to talk to me before they get trained and they don't even get they're speaking somebody else's language. They're speaking the big box language. So when you talked about the fee thing, it's like, wouldn't it be great if a higher fee got you a better result, but there's zero correlation. Hmm. And, and I'd actually say there's an inverse correlation. The more you pay for mutual funds and fees and tra trading costs and all that, I can tell you, you're going to do worse. So if, if I'm following along with you, uh, do you know the, uh, the funny translation of BMW? <laughs> I know the, what it really stands for. I mean, it, the fastest way is burn my wallet. Uh, okay. Because a buddy of mine's been buying Beamers for years, and he's got you know, an M3 all done up for racing and everything else. And I used to be, I mean, I still am. I don't have one right now, but I've had three Jeeps in my life, right? So <laughs> you got BMW, and then you got Jeeps. What's the difference? Well, the BMW, you pay a whole lot up front. And I don't care who you talk to, you pay a lot in servicing if you try and hold on to it because it's German and it costs a lot to fix, just like the Mercedes connection earlier. But then the Jeep world, 
I might get it a little bit cheaper because it's an American made vehicle maybe uh, in, in just a very quick uh, comparison. But the problem with jeeping is then you start geeking out about accessorizing <laughs> and upgrades and uh, uh, manly revamps. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. I'll just say next, you, you might've spent maybe 35 K on, on a sweet Jeep. The next thing you know, you've dropped another 10 to 15 into it. Um, so I've seen those. <laughs> so, so I, I, I can't even, I'm not trying to make fun of BMW, right? Because like, Oh, I was like, dude, burn my wallet. It was expensive. And granted, I, I, I had an Audi a four years ago. Loved it. You said about the lifestyle, right? Thing drove like a dream, super smooth. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm driving an Audi. And so I'm totally connecting on this. And then nowadays, uh, my company car that I use for myself and my business is a Subaru. I yeah. mean, all wheel drive. Get Actually, Subaru and Audi have the two best all wheel drive systems out there. They're the founders of them. And uh, a heck of a lot more cost effective because when I started putting miles on that Audi, and I'm a road warrior, man. I love to travel. <laughs> that, that Audi, oh my God. You, you fixed it. Send German, German cost, man. BMW, Mercedes, whatever. And if uh, you don't mind spending that, great. But then I thought about it, I'm like, why? I wanted all wheel drive. I wanted utility. Subaru gives me more utility. Versatility, because I'm a huge outdoorsy nut. I racked the heck out of my Audi roof, just like I did the Subaru. Hands down, Subaru all the way. That's just me nowadays. But then 15, 20 years ago, when I was in the corporate space, driving the Audi, I didn't really think that way. <laughs> so is this part of your translation, how you help people with the whole branding versus value versus what you're actually getting? Yeah. And you know, it's, it's so difficult because we're taught that there's a difference between Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Edward James, Edward Jones. We're, we're, no, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it that way. They all say they do it differently, but they don't do it differently. It's, it's the same thing. And this is what happens to people. They get warned. They're like, you know what? Then I'm going to go to my local guy, which your local guy almost always has insurance products. Mm -hmm. And people go through and they're like, okay, then, well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. And then eventually they're like, I'm just learning what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the frustrating part because they haven't. This, is this because you're a CFB? You, you, you've were, I guess, trained differently? No. It's oh. not. <laughs> Sorry. So the, letters, so the letters don't mean anything either then. Okay. <laughs> this is good. People need to understand this because they, they, I, got, they, I got younger listeners and they're like, what the hell is a CFP and an NLP? Granted. Look, I, I, I will be honest. So I got the CF. There's about 80,000 CFPs in the country. Okay. And That's actually not a lot. It isn't. population density. No. There's about a million-ish people who some – frame or another will call themselves a financial advisor or a financial something. Mm -hmm. Some of them may just sell insurance, but there's a, 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 a million series six and 63. I forget what I was called. Yeah. Those, so. those are the most popular ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, having gone through the schooling and passed the test, which has a very low pass ratio um, for the CFP. For the CFP, it has like a 53% pass rate. I have a buddy studying for it right now. He said, it's no joke. I mean, it's... No, no, it's serious. Like, yeah. so what, I, I, look, if you need to make a first cut, have those three letters afterwards. Because at least CFP every year is getting harder and harder and harder with their CE units. They are pushing towards us. They're like, fiduciary, fiduciary, fiduciary. You put them first. You put them first. So uh, Hold on. We got to pause on this because I just recorded a show last week. <laughs> We brought up defining fiduciary <laughs> and fiduciary. Okay, so hold on, Scott. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the screen for a second because I need to make sure that this doesn't lose I'm power. No, it's cool. We're live. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what he or she defined it as. Well, I mean, and let's not uh, use it's, jargon. It's like, ago, so like, it's not it's it's not word for word, but they basically hinted about how a lot of companies say that they have a fiduciary responsibility but they officially don't. It's Agreed. really like, there's like you, they say it and they make you think that they're looking out for you because they said the words, but it's all on how you say the words, right? Can we, so let's refresh people hearing this right now who might not have heard that podcast. Cause by the time this airs, that one will be out and you'll probably be about a week or two apart from each other. So, because there is a difference, right? People can say, Oh, I'm, I have a fiduciary responsibility to put you first, but well, that's different. Is there a legal responsibility, right? So there's a legality in there, depending on your job or your position in the financial so world. So the, 
do not under, do not underestimate the system to protect itself. Okay. Right. The system is the tallest buildings in your town. So okay. you go to any town in any country, the tallest building, I mean, let's just set aside tech for a second. Because right away, of course, I thought of Salesforce Tower in San Francisco. But generally speaking, the tallest buildings are going to be insurance, banking, investing. Okay. And by the way, if it's not the tallest, it's the second tallest. Yeah. I mean, if you just if you fly over a city, yeah, I agree with you. It's either a banking building or a financial institution or whatever. They have the tallest buildings. The system will protect itself. Hmm. So if the government comes out and says, you have to, by law, put your clients' money and interest first by law legally. You're going to lose about nine. You're going to lose about ninety-two percent of all advisors. Just, just they're gone. Because if they're a CFP and they're a broker, or if they're this and then they're that, again, the system says we can't have. We can't. We can't do this. We yeah. can't have them, because that means I need to work harder on getting my clients a better price or make their money work harder than it's working for me. And it's, it's actually really important. And, but here's the thing. If you come to me and say, RC, you fiduciary? I'm like, yeah, yeah. My job is to, now I'm, I'm making up language now. Yeah. yeah. My job is to put your money first. I didn't answer the question. Right. That's what he said too. Actually, just, you know, you familiar with Peter Lazaroff? I'm not, but I kind of live in a cave. <laughs> it's okay. No, I mean, he's, he's, he, uh, he's been on Wall Street Journal and Forbes and all that stuff. Um, but he's, he's the guy that I was talking about. He, he but, has okay. a plan corp. But that's what he was saying. He's like, people can say the words, but they don't actually have a fiduciary okay. response. I, 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 I want to interrupt you because this is important. Yeah. We shouldn't have to trust our advisor. Oh, interesting. So let's, I mean, we could talk the whole hour on this, but. Oh, I know. Why, why? Do you, do you trust that you're, let's just say you have someone cut your lawn. Do you trust and like them to a level of like that, that's the lead? Like, no, man, I, I trust them. I mean, like, are they doing brain surgery on your lawn? I mean, I, I'm in a lawsuit right now with the guy who destroyed our backyard, putting in a concrete <laughs> patio last year. So there's not a lot of trust out there right now. I'd like, I would like to trust my fellow entrepreneurial professionals out there with all types of businesses, but unfortunately, I have to protect myself. Now I'm, I know more about patio landscape design than I ever wanted to, thanks to my litigation lawyer. Uh, but so. imagine you didn't have to trust and like, right? So let's say you are a mechanic and you just, you're like, look, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with the car. I know how to do it. I don't have the time. I'd rather spend it with my kids or whatever, mountain biking. Sure, that's so me. You, you go find a, a mechanic and you're like, God, I mean, I really need to trust this guy. I really need to like him. You're like, no, you're going to fix this. And I know nothing about cars, but like, you're going to fix this. You know how it looks. And it's, you don't need to trust and like him or her because you can verify their work. Yeah. So the thing with investing is we've been all taught to have to trust and like because no one was taught, no one was trained. And it's about getting trained. Like none of us have been trained to verify what actually works, trained. Well, let's pause on the whole training to verify because nowadays, thanks to the online space, we can do a much faster deep dive into all things, I feel. I mean, look at this YouTube university, I nickname it, right? It's like you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, but to your point, I agree. I don't need to know everything about it. But I want to be at least be able to just research quick, figure it out, or like in the name of your book, Fearless Wealth, right? It's like, okay, I want to be able to get into wealth creation with less fear. Doesn't mean I want to become an advisor. You know, I, I tried the finance world, hated it. I was like, I don't understand how you live in it. More power to you. I'd rather help people launch brands and marketing and all that. It's way more fun to me. That's just like accountants. Dear Lord, I don't know how people yeah. have the brain capacity to stare at numbers all day, but... I, ha I have an account because I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I researched him. I confirmed their firm's success rate. Sure. He was also already taking care of my wife's uh, veterinary business. So I already knew. I'm like, okay, you know what? I like you. Cool. There you go. Do my books. So, um, but that, again, it's reputation. It's credentials. It's okay. These guys are good. They know what they're doing. And he gives me a good rate. So I'm all right. Imagine if I could train you to look, if someone says go by X, Y, Z. Okay. And I could train you so in about three seconds, you could go yes or no. Now, is this thanks to app tech or just the knowledge as you're hinting at, like just the awareness or the knowledge around that in my own head? Would I have to go on a computer at all? 
you would have to go on a computer and you'd okay. have to look at an image. Yeah, okay. And it has to be the, the, the correct image, but our brains are designed to look at patterns. Here's something fun. I do screen sharing on the show. Is there anything I can do like right now? Yeah. Oh, let's have some fun here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's we're going to do some live stuff. <laughs> all right. So, and, uh, and actually real quick, since I'm already on here, fearlesswealth.com, people. Okay. Fearlesswealth.com. Also name of the book. We'll get to that on the show. But where am I going? Where, where, where should I go? Go to stock charts. Stock charts. Dot com? Yeah. Okay. Stockcharts.com. And again, for listeners, right, you're not watching this on YouTube or Facebook, but uh, you could always pause. That's the beauty of podcasting. Pause. Now, is it? <laughs> because the thing is, their default is not the right image. Okay. So. Should I just try Googling the words stock charts? No, it's, it's, so here's the, here's the problem. This is another good example. So if someone's like, yeah, 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 I, I know how to look at stock charts. I go, but you're looking at the default settings. Okay. Right. So no one, almost no yeah, one. Like free charts and tools here and stuff. Yeah, so. but they're not. So uh, let me, let me give a, give me, I'll give a little piece. The brain does best with just the right amount of information. Okay. And if it's given too much, it just assumes you're going to get killed and you <laughs> take evasive actions. And if it's. Well, yeah, then your uh, lizard brain kicks in. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so it's like, what's, what's the right amount? So if we can like this is overwhelming <laughs> this I, I completely agree i look at this and go no wonder why i'm I, you know what i'm hungry i'm gonna go get some lunch yeah, for listeners i'm li i clicked on the stock charts ap or acp option on the website and it just brought this really fancy cool looking ups and down graphs of yeah stuff <laughs> can you go up to daily and just see if, if can you see if up to daily can you go to a three-year chart i don't think you can Ooh. Because it's all free, see? Uh, yep, no, because you got to pay, no. pay to play. I can switch at least to monthly, so you, or weekly. Yeah. So weekly that's, but not, that's not going to help. Oh, wait. No, I agree with you. People look at the stuff too short term. I do know that much. You got to look so at the long just, term. Yeah, so let's just take this for a second. Yeah. So first of all, I, I can train anyone to know if what they're about to buy is going to hurt them. Okay. Because our brains are designed to see patterns. That, that's what evolution has done. Mm-hmm. Our brains were not designed to read letters or words. Oh, here, or here's an annual down at the bottom here, by the way. Look at this. Yeah, you know, I see it goes 18. We've got, it's 17. too long, but I'd rather have five years uh, than, than nine months. Oh, well, right here. Well, 2015, I'm just saying this bottom line, 2015, 16, 17, no, 18, 19. So obviously 2018 was a great year. So... Yeah, but even just look up above it to the price. That, that's yeah. the price itself. So what I find is the brain responds. First of all, there's way too much data on this price. Yes, chart. We, I agree. We need to strip so much off of it. But what happens is someone, even if someone says, I heard someone say you got to look at a stock chart, then they, what happens is they get above their skis, right? And then they go, I'm going to put all this stuff on it, and it shuts the brain down. But yeah, information somebody, overload. Information, but they don't realize that they're doing it with the best intent to say, no, I want to, yeah, go to three years right there. Um, Range. There we go. It's, we're, we're getting closer, but we still need to pull about five things off of here. <laughs> so one thing the brain has a hard time with is something I call investment vertigo. Okay. Because the brain thinks the higher something goes, on one hand, it has farther to fall. True. Right. So what I hear a lot from people is, well, it's gone too high, too far. It's gone too high up. I'm like, oh, so now you know where it's going? Hmm. I mean, the neat thing about the stock market is there's about 500 million people behind this price chart. I mean, this is the Dow Jones. Um, okay. But generally speaking, if you look at an index like the S&P 500 index, and it's just a basket of stocks, it's 500 and I think 504 stocks. Because and I've actually some... heard from a no, numerous people, they say, you know, if you want to be a complete beginner and just keep it basic, just follow the S&P. What are your thoughts on that statement? 100% agree. Oh. But, but here's what I would disagree with. You just said, let's keep it basic. So right away, someone's like, I don't want to be basic. No, I want to go for it. I want to do uh, more. It's like, whoa, whoa, hold on here, brother. That's true. I'm aggressive. If you want like, to classify me as an investor, I'm an aggressive guy. So. But I would say... 98% of people should start and finish with just the index. Now, this is not, I'm not talking buy and forget. I'm not talking Ron Popeil, set and forget it, rotisserie. But I'm simply saying, let's just get the direction of the market right. Okay. Because right, the market goes up 78% of the time. 
80% of the time it goes higher. Over, over what's, what's your timeline you're kind of hinting at here, just in general, like over every year or over, over all time? So over all time, so we can, we can chunk this down. So we can start at 120 years, mm -hmm. then we can drop it to every uh, 60 years, then we could drop it to every 30 years, then we can drop it to every 15 years, then we can drop it to about every seven and a half years. So we can, we can chunk it pretty far down. Yeah. You could probably get it down to five years and go, yeah, generally speaking, if you start looking at five-year rolling chunks, 78% 78, 78 of the time, it's going to be higher. So okay. just the fact that you have the wind to your back, you have history to your back, that, those are pretty good odds. Right. Now, you've got to, wor to worry about the 22% because it's short on time, but it's pretty deep on loss. So is this some of the, I guess, the – thoughts opening process, I guess you want to call it, or, or, your, or growth that you, you're trying to get out of it when, when you wrote the book? Because obviously using the keyword fearless, I love the word, right? I've done, I'm a former firefighter. I'm an adrenaline junkie sports guy. We joked around about Scott having earlier. I race mountain bikes. Like I love chipping away at the uh, life's fear, so to speak. Because I tell people all the time, like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, you get started and then you just keep going. <laughs> and then eventually over time, you know, Every time you add a new adrenaline junkie thing in or new risk, the, the, the psychology behind it has diminished. Like the, the, I've, I've broken through enough barriers, so to you're speak. You're also leveling up each time. I mean, when exactly. you go mountain biking, you're not starting on a 12-foot drop. No, like literally three weeks ago or last month, I, I tried my first 100-mile mountain biking race, uh, which is asinine in general. Uh, <laughs> but... I, you can't just wake up one day and say, yeah. I'm going to go race a mountain bike yeah. all day long in, you know, with, oh, I did over 7,000 feet of climbing just in the first 60 miles. I mean, no, you got to train. <laughs> so that was crazy by the way. So, but I agree with you. So is that, so, so your book, does your book kind of build people into the process? One of the first things I yeah one, one of the first things I say in the book, and I'm going to use really uncomfortable language. <laughs> oh, fun! We're going like to we're going to we're going to get uncomfortable, uncomfortable people. We're getting okay. uncomfortable. <laughs> so, when you talk about money, if your ten year old doesn't understand what you're talking about, you've you've gone beyond the limit of what you understand. Hmm. And this was Richard Feynman's definition of domain knowledge. So Richard Feynman said, if literally you can't use 10-year-old language, the moment you start, and by the way, 10-year-olds do not know jargon. 10-year-olds don't know the word risk. Risk is a board game, okay? <laughs> risk tolerance, <laughs> they go, dad, you lost me. So it's like, okay, what's, okay, that, I, no, okay, no, no. So let's start with the word feelings, which is like, whoa, why are we going there? Imagine there's this room in your house, and on the door it says, Fear, oh, it says mad, sad, and afraid. Okay, because a 10-year-old won't say fear. They'll say scared or afraid. Yeah. But it's not just scared and afraid. It's mad and sad and afraid. So imagine you have a room and when well, you mad, walk Mad, sad, in, and afraid is the reaction. You know, the three, three reactions from, I think, the onset of fear. But again, to your point, we've got to talk to a 10-year-old. <laughs> it happens. It ha so here's the thing. We're always in one of our four feelings. Mad, sad, glad, afraid. Humans only have four feelings. There's not a fifth or a sixth or a seventh. Now we can give NLP, different. Is this the NLP stuff? I actually don't know if, I mean, this, there's probably overlap. Okay. I mean, NLP is we have programmed our brains to have the experience we're having. So if you don't like the experience you're having, then you've pro, you need to reprogram it. And the way we can reprogram our words is by changing the words we use. Okay. So for example, I've never used the word risk when I talk to like a training student. Now how long ago did you learn that? Not to stop you to, uh, 20 years ago. Okay. But why, why was the trigger? Was that a coach? Was that an influencer? Well, so it's because I'm dyslexic. I think, wow. I think that's part of it. And um, I graduated high school with maybe a fourth grade reading, like reading level. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I graduated with a 3.4 out of a four because I took every art class in my school. And then my art teacher started giving me art classes, like one-off art classes, because I was very artistic and creative and I could do amazing things with my eyes and my hands. You're wired but, differently. 
I'm wired, I'm wired differently and I think in images. So I remember oh, I so lived- You're a visionary. Or a visual, <laughs> visual, I mean, seriously, I like a visual learner. Like am, you can help people envision those next steps. You could speak so, to them in a visual way. If you would have, so I lived in Asia for a couple of years out of college. I made a lot of money. I came back with a lot of money. My parents had already had their life savings embezzled. So I went to all the big box advisors and they were all using terms that were making me really angry. Hmm. Right now, I'm not angry. It was, I was like, I don't know what this means. I don't, and my, my system's really dialed into words to confuse. Okay. So I would say to them, but, but what is that? What do you mean risk? I don't know what that means. Like, and I wasn't trying to be that guy. Like, well, risk, well, you know, you don't want to lose money. I'm like, okay, well, why don't you just say lose money? Well, you're not going to lose money because it's going to be made back. Well, but wait, what are we talking about here? So, but mm -hmm. they, 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 I didn't mean to, but I'd push them beyond their level of being able to talk about it because I wanted them to talk to me like a 10 year old. <laughs> right. So when I say to a training client, I'd never say how much do you want to risk or what's your risk tolerance or what's your self-described risk tolerance. I'll simply say, how much do you want to lose? Let's just say we're talking about an individual position. Okay. Just for an example, you go by Microsoft, you have $100,000, you want to buy it. Just yeah. for the sake of this, say, I want to buy a Microsoft. The first question I train my clients to do is say out loud or to their spouse, I'm going to lose. And you say the dollar amount. Okay. Just to see how they react. So, and then to watch like, Ooh, no, I'm not really going to lose because it's a good company. And no, it's earnings, blah, blah, blah. It's like, Whoa, Whoa. We know the number you just said freaked out your brain. Yeah. So we know when it does eventually lose that you're going to freak out. So, so you're trying to get your people ready for the freak out so they could ride the wave. If, if they can't, survive the verbal, I am going to lose. So let's just use the Microsoft, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go by Microsoft and I'm going to lose uh, $2,000. Yeah. And let's say I put 4,000 in. And my, my system's like, yeah, I'll lose $2,000. That's cool. And it's like, oh, okay, then that means that's a 50, you're, you're allowing a 50% price volatility, right? Because you bought $4,000, you're allowing a 50% price volatility. The brain gets what volatility is. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there's like this thing I don't want to happen. But at least we're now talking about a loss of money. And the brain's like, but some people's brains, they'll do this. Now I'm putting half my money in Microsoft. Okay, we'll say that out loud. I'm going to go put half my money in Microsoft. Nope, that's not what I trained you. I'm putting half of my money, $50,000 in Microsoft and I'm gonna lose $25,000. I don't wanna lose 25,000. Well, you're all people think about is because I'm investing, they wanna, they wanna always spin it in the positive connotation is what I'm hearing. Uh, and they don't, wanna, they don't even wanna consider the negative. But it's not a negative over the long haul is what you're saying. You know, it's, you're gonna ride it out. They, they, but they don't ride it out. And I'm not suggesting writing it out. Like people don't, I don't see a lot of learning happening <laughs> in the investment world oh, because, right. because they're not taught to, okay, let's go look at an image. Let's look at three and a half years of Microsoft. Let's just look at, and let's just assume I show you the right image. Mm -hmm. Everything's pulled off it. It's clean. All that silly stuff you saw, the squiggly lines, we look at it. <laughs> okay. So look, an investment can do three things. The bus can be heading north out of town and already left town and it's, it's north out of town heading north. Okay. Let's call that a, up and to the right, a stock that's going up. Or, you got a bus. You're going to be chasing it. You just get on. Yeah. Okay. You, you just get on the bus, right? You have three choices. Get on the bus heading north, wherever it is. Get on the bus heading south and start hoping and praying it turns around, heads back to town, gets through town and heads north. Or you can get on the bus that is like, I don't know what it's doing in the town. Sometimes it's going north, east, southwest. It's just kind of meandering through the town. And yeah. right? so there's only three investments on the planet. Okay. Up, down, and I don't know. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not well, oversimplifying. I'm up, down, or flatline, but okay. I, uh, but yeah. flatline's the same thing. Flatline's the, the confusing, erratic heartbeat mm -hmm. where one day you're up, one day you're down. And before you know it, you got this cortisol drip on your brain called Tesla. Mm. Right? You're a hero. You're a zero. You're, it's like, really? That's... I mean, you're getting cortisol dumped on you, your brain. 
And me being the health nut, we've had many health people on the show. Excessive cortisol levels are not exactly <laughs> healthy for you. So you want to reduce that. Um, and it sounds like knowledge is what helps us reduce that. So, And I'm, I'm just going to be OCD and I'll say training. And training. There you go. Because knowledge is like what people nod to. Training is being how you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be it. Okay. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, I like that because anybody can acquire knowledge at any point in time, but when you commit to a training program, it's usually got a, a, a timeline established to it. There's a process, there's things you're following, learning, et cetera. It's not just, Oh, I'm just acquiring knowledge. Like, no, you're following a, a training program. Yeah. So you're, you're training your behavior, right? So when the light goes off and you're a hundred thousand miles above the earth, you were trained to behave a certain way. Mm -hmm. that, that's behavior shifts. That's your bio biology has been trained to behave a certain way. Yeah. But people are not trained to grow their money. People are taught information and they can nod to it and they can throw around jargon. Uh, I, I love this because um, the reason why I have fires in the logo, I don't know much you know about the background, but I, I, I left the corporate world for a couple of years and spent a few years with the federal government fighting wildfires, like legitimate wild and firefighting out west and uh I, I, you don't just show up and know how to fight wildfires you know you i went to a couple of fire academies and then even with that they said oh you're an academy guy yeah let, now the training really begins you know uh because you're in the actual job you're in, you know you have to respect the process but even after two years uh you're still called a snooky which is a second year rookie so even though you've risked your life and you fought some crazy wildfires in those first two years you know you go from rookie to snooky and you're on top of the world and you feel confident but it's like dude you're still two years into something it's you know, i learned a lot but i'm not a career lifetime wildland firefighter like i'll never try and compare myself to those guys but again training lots of training so so they can thin slice something unconsciously and go no it's that way right and it's like i don't know he's been out here 30 years i'm following him yeah there is some of that, which I was really hard for me to wrap my head around, which is like, okay, my squad bosses have been doing this 15, 20 years. Uh, one guy was 12, but my superintendent's been doing it for 20, 30 years. So you're supposed to just trust the process, trust the leadership. And, and they're still human though. So you also know deep down, like, well, they can still make mistakes. So no, there is no such thing as perfection. I, I no longer like that word in my vocabulary. I'm always trying to catch myself because people – throw that around too much. There is no such thing as perfection or perfect or anything. Stop it. <laughs> people trying to hold themselves to unrealistic expectations. Perfection. So perfectionists are people who don't want to get hurt. Hmm. So those are not going to be your aggressive uh, investors. They, they have a polar experience. They're either very, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. They're either un, I make up words. They're either unhealthily aggressive I get it. <laughs> or unhealthily, really, really passive and despondent. Okay. Because a, a perfectionist is someone who does not want to be hurt. Mm. So if they do it the right way, they won't be hurt. Right. So what happens is someone, and it doesn't matter whether you go to Harvard or somewhere else, if there's this perfectionist that drives you and you bring that perfectionism into the stock market, you're going to get crushed by the market. Because what we're doing as little, little humans, adult children, is I don't want to get hurt again. Okay. Now, imagine that leading your investment strategy, the phrase, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want my yeah. parents to hurt me. I want my parents to love me. Imagine that's, that's how you're, you're leading. second guessing every single thing you do. But it's happening below the surface. Yes. And it's happening below the surface. You're like, God, I just don't know what's wrong. So what's happening you, is, or as a CFP and everything you know now, like how do you help battle that? I mean, is it again? Does it come down to literally time? They need training with you. They need time to. You, have, you need time to break this down with your clients. I mean, yes, it's a yes and yes and it's not uh, nineteen years. It's it's eight weeks. Hmm. But it's it's you can interrupt the brain. So let's say I say to you. I'm gonna give actual information to you right now that's scaring the hell out of people. The, the, the yields are inverted. Mm -hmm. The last time the yields inverted, we had a 58% crash. The time before that, the yields inverted, we had a 49% crash. Yields are inverted now. We've got 25% of global debt, negative yielding. Uh, the recession's coming, blah, 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 blah. 
So I can, I mean, did you see what the PE ratio was? I mean, the last time the PE ratio was this was either 1929 or 2008 or 2000. So what happens is people read words. But also the inflection, your, your, how you're saying it too. I'm saying it that way because that's how yeah. they're hearing it in their yeah. brain. Yeah. They're not hearing, well, then we're going to walk down the street. No, they're putting their own inflection to the words. Okay, so they're adding the inflection. They're adding gustatory feeling. So they're, they're feeling sick in here. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're loading up this gustatory experience. Fight or flight's kicking in, man. Your, your skin's it, it, crawling. And, and the other thing is they're loading up pictures. I just, I, I just I can't be on the street. I don't want to eat cat food. I got to get my kids to college. I want my spouse to love me. I want my friends. That, like, they're yeah. loading up these images. And so imagine you walk into that room with these images hitting you. You got sick gut feeling like it's the SAT stay and you, you did not study for them. Mm. Okay. Someone, you hear someone yelling from 30 years ago, you're loading up images of being on your own and eating cat food. Okay. And now you're going to go buy something. Okay. That, that's a pretty bad state. Yeah. I don't see that's going to go very well. So it's, it's, it's not now you can absolutely arrest that whole process by literally flashing up an image on the screen and being like, oh, that just hijacked the other images that were hijacking you. It literally shuts down and you look at this and go, oh, got it. Up. So you're training people to find what's, what it's gonna take to create that peace of mind for, to help shut that down, that, the, the fear, just like, okay, let's, let's pause it. You, if, if you have this going on, Mm-hmm. Okay, and let's call this overwhelm, stress, He's uncertainty. shaking his fist, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's the podcasting world. It's okay. That's why we're co-hosting. <laughs> Sharing is caring. <laughs> right now, he left. He's not even, he's not even, I don't, you know what? I don't know where he is, but you, the listeners, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, so imagine this is a very negative experience. Okay. Mad, sad, afraid, scared, parents yelling at you, cat food. Kids can't go to college. It's, it's very scary. Mm-hmm. I, you, you, you as a human, we, we can't pull this away. We can't be like, stop that. I'm going to manage this. You can't manage your feelings. Mm-hmm. That, that's, a, that's like um, willpower. You can't muscle through it. I mean, okay. you can muscle once through it, but here's what happens. Clarity gets rid of that immediately. So if you want to describe what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> My one hand knocked my other hand out of the screen. Yeah. But clarity immediately got rid of all this stuff over here. Right. I remember a training client. She was with her friends and all of her friends were so scared. This was 2008. They were talking about how much they were losing. And she, she got scared. And she, she called me. She goes, RC, we're not doing well. I'm like, I don't, what, what's going on? She goes, we're losing. I was like, what? Well, Losing what? Like, I literally didn't know what she was talking about. What do you mean losing? Well, my money's going away. I was like, what? Go pull up X, Y, and Z. She, like, she got hijacked. Hmm. And she literally pulled up this tool that I trained her to use called the Wealth Dashboard. And she looked and she goes, oh, we, we," you know, she, she was trained to look for that picture. Yeah. Um, because it's the picture that can eliminate the overwhelm, the stress, the angst. So the rewinding back to earlier in the show, you're creating that, that visual connection for them. It's like, okay, here's that visual trigger that's going to knock that out of, the, out, out of the ballpark, so to speak. Because we're triggering ourselves. Yeah. You say risk. You say, did you see what happened? Oh, my God. You know, you know Tom, right? Did you hear what happened to Tom? Yeah, he lost it all. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, wait, what, like, it sounds really scary. But we can actually arrest the whole process. So you identify the feeling. And the, the, the problem with money is, did, did I lose you? Nope. I'm about to screen share your site because I just found your wealth dashboard. It's module two in your training. <laughs> You're not going to be able to see it though. <laughs> no, but I just wanted to at least overview this for the people watching it because no. like, you, you break out the training, nice, simple, six comprehensive modules here. So, But it is visual. Like, look at that. Yeah. Look at the, the, the wealth dashboard image. Like, yeah. we can look at a dashboard, dashboard on our car and go, oh, we're going 75. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't have to guess. Yeah. But in the world of investing, 
we're taught to look for words to describe 80 miles an hour. Okay. Right. So imagine you wanted to meet a person of your dreams and let's say you are attracted to women and let's say someone said to you, Scott, I got this, I got this woman you should meet. She's uh, authentic, brave, and smart. And you're like, okay, that's great. But what does she look like? No, 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 no. Did you not hear me? No. Authentic and brave yeah. and smart. You say, that's great. What does she look like? No, Scott, you're not hearing me. I said brave. Yeah. We don't get brave a lot and smart. No, no, I got that. What does she look like? Yeah. Well, this sounds, and I'm not making light of this, change out person, woman, man of my dreams to investment. And I say to you, I got a company. Man, it is exploding in China. It's like the Facebook of India. And man, their profit margin is doing this. And man, their user base has spent an hour on the site and their next competitor is 10 minutes. I mean, they're doing great. You're like, we're not taught to go, but I need to see what she looks like or yeah. I need to see what he looks like. We're like, wait, what? An hour on and that other one's at 10 minutes and they got to, there's like, yeah, get me it. Like we're taught to not look at a picture, but any other area of our life, why would we turn away from the thing? And so I'm simply saying, but what does he look like? But what does the person look like? Because so, uh, a lot of us are visually triggered. It makes sense, you know? No, we all are. Yeah. And, and, and it's partially dangerous for me to say what he or she looks like with what's going on today, but it's a really clean example that seeing what the person looks like is an important part of the experience. Mm -hmm. And yet we buy things in the investment world. I, I, not only do I have no idea what it looks like, I have no idea what he's saying. I just trust and like him. Mm. But do you have to trust and like him? Yeah, because I have no idea what he's saying. That's a problem. Again, full circle back to the later show, but you're trusting him because of some big successful financial company and you think their name is going to give you all the warm and fuzzy, but in reality, they're charging you boatloads of fees and you're they're just milking your percentages off top. Like, like, Hey, you're paying for our great name. You know, there's your trust. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And, and the average underperformance I found in two decades of looking at people's portfolio is about 4%. Yeah. Which and is a staggering up. number that, so, so if they're growing their money at 5% a year, I'm telling them I found a hole with four more percentage points. So it could be growing at nine without more price volatility or overwhelm or complication. So when their big box advisor says our fee is only, I'm making up a number 1%. Because they were never trained to think visually, they're, they're actually losing about four percentage points. And I understand the brain goes four, four percentage points. They're all single digit numbers. Right. But if, if you grow your money 6%, right, 6% a year, it's going to take you 12 years to double that. Okay, so another 12 years after that. So in 24 years, you'll double it twice. But if you grow your money at 10%, you can double your money three times, hmm. which comes out to be twice as much, by the way. No. So you can have twice as much money in a little over two decades simply by plugging the holes and getting trained to think visually. That, that's, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, if that's not a reason to consider just getting some training, because uh, I, I mean, I agree this, 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 because I, I could just simplify it back to fear is a lack of knowing or understanding really. So once you know, I mean, knowing it was only half the battle, right? You had, I think I'm quoting GI Joe when I was like, <laughs> something. Go with, something. Go, go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Like, hey, it's a classic. Uh, but it's true. Like knowing is only half the battle. <laughs> now it's understanding it. It's comprehending it. it. It's actually being able to execute on it. Um, you can have all the knowledge in the world. We talked. We joked around about this before we started the show. Like you can acquire all this knowledge, but if you don't find a way to pass it on, train it to somebody else, whatever, like you're not reaching that, that status, uh, this, that, that, that level of wisdom. I mean, why gain all the knowledge if you're not passing it on? And that's why I love training. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of training in my, in my own business. And I, I, I'm a huge advocate. It's like, guys, like get out there. Don't just but learn, you, train. When we talked about mountain biking, you're training. You're, yeah. you're out there. You're not reading. Yeah. 
you're, you're not being taught, this is a wheel, this is a derailleur, this is a cassette. Like that's, that's being taught the parts. Mm-hmm. Training is if you hire a mountain biking tr- trainer, like, hey, Scott, you got you to get down more on that, that tabletop. Like you're actually being trained to behave differently. No. But, but people aren't trained. And the, the problem is we don't rise to the level of our knowledge. We fall to the level of our training. Nice. Little foundation. And, and, and knowledge is free today. It used, knowledge used to be the gap. Yeah. Well, we talked around about that too, right? Now, the online space now, right? You could technically search out knowledge almost anywhere. I mean. It's free. Yeah. I mean, some people but, want to consider Wikipedia a source of knowledge. I'll, I mean, just so you, again, refresher for the listeners. <laughs> uh, you and I can go edit Wikipedia right now. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but the point is, yes, we have a wealth of accessibility, podcasting, audiobooks. Um, and I, I will say, if you execute right on Audible, on Audible or on podcasting, and you find the right shows like this one, and and the right guest co-host like RC, you, you could you could actually acquire, I think, the entry level into potential creating your own training. But obviously, finding training programs that have been properly built to follow and execute on is much more effective in the long run. But some people, you got to meet them where they're at on the timeline. Right, RC, like people hearing this right now, you're going to have some people like, this already sounds exhausting. You have other people hearing this show and they're like, well, you know what? I've, I've been thinking about it. I've been trying to figure out, you know, where, where I'm at. And then other people are like, dude, I'm already fed up. Let's do this. I need some training because I'm tired of people ripping me off. So there's, everybody's at a different place on the timeline. And so I believe there's only three, so I'm going with this. There's only three parts of our life, our health our wealth and our self. And the self is all of our relationships on the planet. If you believe in God, self goes into that too. So you have health, wealth, and self. Okay. So if one of them's not working, it it doesn't matter if the other two are working, right? So if you don't have, I mean, the really the worst one is if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. I agree. Okay. So let's say you were, you were trained to be wealthy and wealthy is you got to create income. You got to transfer some to your future and the stuff you transfer, you have to protect and grow. Here's what's weird. We start off investors. This is a really weird thing. We don't start off earners, but we think we do. So Mm -hmm. most people by the age of five have been given a dollar or a $5 bill. Yeah. The old piggy bank thing. Yeah. (laughs) Almost everyone has given been given money by the time they're five. As soon as you're given a $5 bill, you have invested in something called a currency. And there's only four assets on the planet. There's only four assets on the planet. And you've been given five units of one. So we actually start as investors, but we don't know it. And here's the weird thing. If you get trained in investing, you start earning more. The opposite isn't true. Hmm. There's people who earn really well and can earn really weller. That's my language again. There you go. And that's actually not transferable to growing money. But the behavior to grow naturally has someone start to make more. I could definitely back that up. I've never had a problem making money in my life, uh, but my wife and her family are much better at investing. Like her father is a former CFO, a retired accountant. Like the guy knows his numbers. Like they're very well situated. I didn't grow up that way. No offense to my family. They just, no one taught them money and investments. So I'm now, now thanking my wife's influence to help add into my growth because I am the primary earner now with my company and everything I'm doing. So it's like, great, let's, let's make my money work better because <laughs> I have no problem making it. Let's make sure it's growing for our future. And that's where I finally allowed the family crossover to happen. It's like, oh, great. There's people who know more about this than I do. Why don't I let them help me? (laughs) But a lot of us are afraid to let people help us too. So, Yeah, what does it mean? And the the thing before you said about we default to fear, which is true because our brain's designed, if in doubt, assume it's going to kill us. Yeah. So the the little rustle and the, the tall grass, we just have to assume it's a large animal with big teeth. We don't, we don't get to play around with that because it's millions, who, millions of years of programming. <laughs> well, the people who did play around with that, they're dead. Yeah. So our ancestors were like, well, look, if we have any doubt and, and our brainstem is doing this, like it's scanning the world. Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Yeah. That amygdala is on fire and it's just like, it's doing its job. So. Yeah. 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 
So we default to just in, just in case, you know, run. And that's not a good behavior in the world of growing money. No. Right. So it's like, okay, I'm feeling scared right now. Like I actually, this is interesting, um, especially for men. Um, so if someone says to me, I'm busy, which by the way, my clients, my, my, I've trained my clients to not say that the B word hmm. because like I, busy means, uh, Oh, you're scared. No, no, I'm busy. No, you're scared. You're saying busy, but you're actually scared. So, and I've seen this happen with uh, really, you know, earns a lot of money. He's 52, two kids. And he was really reluctant to say the B word or to stop saying the B word. Hmm. And one day he goes, yeah, well, I guess I'm scared. I said, could you just say it again with, without, I guess I'm, hmm. I'm scared. And so I, I, I had him play a game with two of his close friends and he, he said to them, I'm not allowed to say busy anymore. Well, I tie that back to, which has come up a lot more in the past year and a half or so of this show from time to time is I do tie this, what you're saying to that big word of vulnerability. And especially as men, I'm not saying women out there don't have the same struggle, but us guys, tough guys, especially we think we know everything. We're afraid to show vulnerability or let people know that we don't know something, or we're afraid to let somebody who might know something more help us because we we're like, we're afraid or I'm afraid that, Oh, they're going to see that I don't have my shit together. Well, you know, it takes time. The right? sooner you start accepting this and allowing that fear to just set in, you can move beyond it and work with people like you to help people find that visual stimuli to get us past that. It's like, okay, great. The fear's there. Now you've accepted it. Let's move on. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing. You can see with functional MRIs, magnetic resident imaging machines, you can see the amygdala calm down simply by saying, I'm scared. Like there's deep science, even just saying the words. That's super cool. So to get trained and, and for someone to say to their wife or their husband or their friend, I have close friends. They hear me say all the time, I'm scared too. Oh, okay. Well, tell me more about what you're scared to. Like they, they're in on it. Yeah. They're not like, oh, RC, you're not really scared. I'm like, no, I'm scared. I can feel it in my body. I'm scared. But yeah. because I say, I don't, you know, I also sit to say sometimes, man, I'm feeling really great about that. But this is a great thing anyone can do where they don't have to pay anyone. Either don't tell anyone, but just say, I will not say busy. Or whoever they're around say, I will give you $10 every time you hear me say the word busy. Or $50 or $100, mm. right? Tied to the and, money. And, and, and instead, I'm going to say I'm scared. That is going to immediately train the brain to actually figure out, okay, wait a second. I'm scared about, okay. That alone is going to calm down their brain. And they'll be able to move forward, whether it's a phone call or something else. That's an easy three-second shift that can yeah. change people's lives. It's a great little tip of the day. It's just getting dropped in there towards the end of the show. I like <laughs> that. It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, don't, I agree with you. It's, that's, it sounds so simple that a lot of people hearing that right now would be like, well, that's easier said than done. Like, no, no, no. I mean, RC just said it. This isn't rocket science. Like, it, it is easier yeah, said than done. It. Yeah. It, so, and, and, and then going with you, like, and, and so what? But no. incredibly powerful. Like, I would love for some of your listeners to start this yeah. and pick one person, maybe someone they live with, and say, I'm not going to say the word busy anymore. $100 each time I do, I'm going to replace it with scared. Hmm. It go. will change their life. It will also change their relationship with that person, whether it's their spouse or just a friend. Yeah. Absolutely change the entire relationship. I love it. Man, I'm digging this. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're approaching towards the end of the show here. Um, so I love how the fact you're just closing out strong. I mean, this is awesome. Um, but since I kind of just screen share before, I want to just quickly come back to this to help you close the show out. We are hinting at training. And I love, I mean, as a, as a fellow trainer in other areas, I love the simplicity of your modules here. Um, we ended at the wealth dashboard, uh, but I'm, I'm a big strategist. So I'm all about module three right there, but oh my God, three years of podcasting, even though we talk about health, business and lifestyle on this show, mindset, 
has encompassed all of this. What you were just talking about is you're reprogramming that mindset. And then obviously the last module, why people fail. I, I think it's kind of funny. Do you put it at the end because people can't handle it as module one <laughs> to tell people why you're failing? So now that you know what to do, let me tell you why you're going to fail. <laughs> oh, and they already paid me and they're at the end. It's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing this two decades, my entire adult life. This is how you're going to, I'm telling you right now how you're going to do good. it. That's good. And by me, by me calling them out, like, no, this is how you're going to do it. And then they can go, you're right. So now I know when I get close to, what's the thing that goes off when you're by uh, uranium? I'm thinking. Oh God, I, that radiation detector. I, the, the, it's like, Geiger counter. Like, Geiger, Geiger counter. counter. Like, I tell them, basically, I'm like, here's your Geiger counter. When it starts making this noise you're about to lose a lot of money. Yeah. Like, so that's that how people, valuable. <laughs> that's how people have to get rich over and over. Yeah. I've become a millionaire for my fourth time. I suggest becoming a millionaire once. Hmm. I suggest being rich, getting, getting rich once. You do hear this often that they say the true millionaires or billionaires out there are ones that they can lose it all and make it all back again. Cause they know, but I hear this from other investors. They say, because those are the ones they knew how to make it. Now, granted, they took some crazy risks or something and lost it, but the legit, I guess, what do you want to call them? Money earners, investors, whatever. I'm intrigued to see how you can respond to this. They're going to make it back because, I mean, some people refer to Trump this way, whatever. Whoever you're talking about, it's like, great. Okay, multimillionaire. Lost it all, got it back again. Sometimes two, three times. I agree with you. I'm like, why the hell are you losing it to begin with? Are you really as knowledgeable as, you're, as people are saying these people are? Um, I don't know. Uh, that, that's well, for you to explain. Well, and it's, it's survivor bias, right? So we hear about the one that survived. Hmm. Um, I don't know heavy metal. I think it was Motley Crue. There's a Motley Crue um, uh, documentary. And I forgot the person who's watching. They're like, they all should be dead. And, oh, God. Yeah, from with their lifestyles? I agree. Well, yeah, and, but the answer is they're survivor bias. Like the other 100 Motley Crues, they're all dead. Yeah. The one out of 100, they're the one out of 100 that survived. So every billionaire, I mean, we're hearing about the Motley Cruz of wealth. Like, so for every hundred millionaire, every decamillionaire, there's a thousand that lost it all. Hmm. Right. And the thing, again, we talked about this before, earning money and keeping money. Professional baseball, figure skating. No one would confuse the two. They're hmm. completely different skill sets. What happens to the people who completely continue to remake it? They're taking their baseball skills and going over the ice rink and wondering why they keep getting beat up. It's because keeping it is a completely different skill than generating it. Hmm. But I suggest generating it once, yeah. <laughs> transferring some over here, and then growing this visually. Well, that's what I'm getting out of this is that, you know, I, I potentially one of those people, right, where it's like, hey, you're an income earner. It's not, you're not a wealth earner, you're an income earner. Income's not wealth. wealth until it's sustainable and it's growing and you're not crash and burning. <laughs> Look, when you don't have income, income is everything. True. But once you get income, it, the numbers right around, it depends for which part of the country in. Obviously, Silicon Valley, the number's higher. Uh, the middle of Ohio is lower. But somewhere around 150 is the law of diminishing return on income. Okay. Meaning 155 you're not getting 5,000 more of wealth from that five. It's dropped to four and it hmm. keeps going lower and lower. But the first, and I know scientifically the first 75,000 is the most important and the quality of life after that doesn't change. You can drive a nicer car, but the quality of life and happiness. Yeah. So income's important up to a certain point and there's nothing wrong making 300,000 or 3 million. But if you don't add in the transfer to your future and hmm. then figure out visually, get trained to keep it, you can make 300,000, 400,000, 500,000. And you become what a client years ago called himself. He goes, RC, I'm the working rich. I can generate it. Because they haven't figured out to get their money to work for them. He's like, I'm 48 years old. I make 600,000 a year. I don't see the day that I can acquire the choice to not work. No. I'm like, oh, it's because no one's trained you how to keep it. He's like, what? No. I'm like, yeah, you just, it, you haven't been trained. He's like, oh, wait, you're right. Like, it was like, uh, it was a really big aha to him. Like, oh, wait, Stanford undergrad, Stanford master's degree that had to do with earning it. Wait, you're right. Oh, yeah. there's the You went to school and you got the training to make it. 
And then you stopped learning and you stopped getting the training to learn how to keep it. Well, you never got trained to keep or it. Well, you never got trained at all. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> it's like your schooling stopped at earning, and it, which is most of us. That's what this, this whole show is about is we obviously clearly established the fear. But for me, it's like, dude, we all, all these other areas of our lives, we find a reason to go learn something or get trained in something. Well, all of a sudden, I want to learn self-defense. I'm going to go learn from a sensei, you know, and learn yeah. martial arts. You but, know, and oh. let me just cry. I just, I want to, I don't want to be that guy, but I want to, no, you don't go learn. You don't get taught. You get trained. You get trained. Yeah. yeah. You go there to get trained, to feel how the muscle moves. Like, so you know whether to go forward or back. I did yeah. Taekwondo. So it was more kicking. Yeah, I but studied show and I was more a kicker too. Like we get trained when we go to the dojo. We're not taught. I just want to be really clear about that. Because I like it sounds that. like, oh, the book's teaching me. Yes, the book is teaching you. You have to get trained. Hmm. And Stanford didn't train you. Stanford got you a resume and a filter to then get trained at Microsoft or Cisco yes. or Google. Actually, so they didn't another great point, yes. A lot of people think that coming out of the school, they know everything. And I'm like, no, guys, you still need to spend time in the trenches and learn your career or your then, future career, which is- Then you get training. trained. Yes. 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 And so that's what happens. You earn the income. You have to have that. You have to transfer some of it to your future. Notice I didn't say the word save. Mm -hmm. By the way, the brain does not know what save means. <laughs> it, it doesn't because money left over in your checking account, I'm saving. No, mm, transfer, to, transfer to your future and then get trained to keep it. Earn it, transfer it, keep and grow it. Those three things equal sign life with a lot of choices, life with it. a lot of certainty. Do you have a graphic on that anywhere on your site? I'm going to use that. <laughs> if not, get one because that I sounds will. awesome. I like that I equation. Uh, that'd be fun for the podcast graphic. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to go make one and send it to you. See, there you go. Well, listen, RC, I've had a blast here today. You've been dropping some bombs, some knowledge. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is important. This is a wake-up call. This is something that I've struggled with for years as well. And I, that's why I have no problem being transparent and making sure people understand this. Is that, guys, like, uh, this is training. It, it, Everything else I've done in my life took training. So same thing. You know, I have to keep reinvesting my, in back in myself and acquiring more training, more knowledge, just like you're learning here today. So, well, RC, my guest co-hosts, before I close the show, I always ask you guys to help close the show out, some final words or anything. You kind of hit on a, a, some big hitters here at the end. So, I mean, is there anything else that's all-encompassing that you'd want to sum it up with, uh, just in case they forget all the other knowledge you share with us today? Man, Get, let me just say, let, let me say a couple things. So one, yeah. get to an image, get to a picture. If you can't get to a picture of it, you are not allowed to buy it, right? Oh, I got this thing. It's, it's this third party out of state. I looked at the perspective. It's really good. If you can't go to Yahoo Finance or stock charts and pull up an image of it that's three years in length, you are not allowed to buy it unless you're worth over a billion dollars. There's just no, I call them black box investing. Hmm. You're not allowed to go into a restaurant. You're not allowed to buy a bamboo forest in Malaysia. You need to see a price chart by a third party company that shows you an image with the bus either going north, confused in town, or heading south. You're only allowed to buy buses that are already heading north. So, Maybe I'll just stick with your brain wants an image. And when you don't give it one, it makes one up. And all things being equal, it is not going to allow you to die. So it assumes what you're looking at is going to kill you and it's going to act that way. Mm. That's a bad way to go into growing money. Wow. <laughs> Good point. I love it. I think we hit hard on this. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I got all kinds of notes, but I mean, just some hot words I'm going to throw back out here at the end of the show. Fearless, obviously a big theme of the show. Right? We're trying to overcome this. Uh, be careful of perfection, people. It can crush you. And then obviously, you know, getting to that image and that picture just to help uh, get through the battle. But honestly, the big summation towards the end here is really, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're getting knowledge off of this show today. You can even get his book on, on Amazon, obviously, uh, and elsewhere, Fearless Wealth. I'll share that one more time for the screen share. But in the end, this is still just knowledge. You still need to commit to a training program. And obviously, he also has that available at his website. So again, fearlesswealth.com. And right there in his main toolbar, you have training course options. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, RC, hang tight. I'm going to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, that was RC. That was Fearless Wealth. 
I hope you took a lot away from this today. And if you got too much out of it, make sure you go back and listen again because you'll get more. That's why I love about podcasting. That's why I love running a show. And that's why I love being able to pass all this on. But uh, let's go get some training, people. Stop, stop acquiring knowledge and actually get committed into a program. And let's make sure our wealth is working for us because this is one of those key things of life. And that's what RC helped us remind us of today. So thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. RC helped us do that today. Check them out at fearlesswealth.com. Thanks for hanging. And remember, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.